So let me just take a moment and talk to you about this promise thing and see if maybe we can strike oil. And if the Lord will help me to give it to you the way that I felt that he gave it to me. When God gave the promises to Israel about a possession of land, it wasn't just about property, but it was about God defeating every giant, every enemy that Israel would ever encounter. So the promises of God in your life, they're not just for you to feel better. It is so that every obstacle and every giant, everything that you have ever struggled with is dealt with once and for all. Does anybody in this room believe that the work that Jesus did on the cross was enough to deal with every issue that you would ever have? So let me just show you this for a moment to, to illustrate. And if you'll let me give you just briefly some Bible history because it's your history. When God first gave the promise to Abraham about a nation that would rise and the land that would be given, this was the land grant that God originally gave to Israel, went all the way over into Iraq, up into Syria, down into Egypt. That was, that was the biblical promise. And, and this isn't part of the message today, but just for those that would say that Israel doesn't have any right to be in the land that they're in, they don't understand biblical history. Okay, God gave this entire region to Israel as a promise. And then when they would go in to the promised land under Joshua, the land would be divided like this. And all of that area would be given to specific tribes. Now across this room this morning, there are tribes. <laughs> you have your tribe. I have my tribe. And to each one of our tribes, God has given us promises. Now, it didn't mean that we wouldn't have to fight, that we wouldn't have to battle, that there wouldn't be some things that we would have to deal with. But God's promise to Israel was that I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you a promise. And God intended that every promise he ever gave them would be fulfilled. I want to get that in your mind today because there are those of us carrying promises, hopes, and dreams that because it's been so long, it seems so distant, and there is an impossibility in our minds now that the thing that God put within us is never going to take place. I want to make it clear to you here today that every promise that God ever intended, God has the ability to fulfill. So all of these tribes were given specific pieces of property. You can say that it was the promise of healing. It was a promise of family Salvation is the promise of revival. It's the promise of, of whatever God is, has placed within you. Understand with me that it's the job of the enemy of your soul to challenge the promises of God. This is the reason Israel would go in and fight and declare Take land that God had promised. There's one particular tribe. It's the tribe of Dan. You'll notice they are given a piece of property that is on the coast 
of the promised land. It was in Philistine territory. But it was tough because the arch enemy of Israel was always the Philistines. They were constantly oppressing and challenging the promise of God. I ask you a question this morning. What is your Philistine giant? I want you to identify it right now. What's the thing that's constantly challenging you? Is it physical, emotional, spiritual, financial? Is it a personal something? What is it? Because every one of us in the room are challenged by some kind of giant. You say, I I don't have those issues. Well, you're more spiritual than the rest of us. (laughs) The opposition to Dan became so significant that the book of Joshua will give us some understanding about how Dan perceived the promise that God had given them. And in Joshua 19, notice what it it says about them. When the territory of the Danites, because of the constant opposition of the Philistines when their territory was lost. They said, we got to do something different. The thing that God has said we're supposed to have is too tough. So they went up to a place called Leshem, and I'll show it to you in a minute. They took it, they put it to the sword and occupied it, and they settled in Leshem, and they named it Dan. Well, that can't be a problem, right? At least they conquered something. And judges will also give us the history that the Amorites pushed the people of Dan up into the hills and wouldn't let them down on the plains, because in the mind of the tribe of Dan. This is too difficult. Let's find something that's easier. Let's find something simpler. And when you look at the map, they went from the coast all the way up to the northern part of Israel. That was never... God's intent for them. So, so why does that matter? Because in their minds, they're thinking, it's too tough here. Let me just do something over here. Write this down. For 2024, fight the battles in front of you, and God will make sure the battles ahead of you are dealt with. Because it's easy for you and me to give up on the promises of God because of the opposition, because of the discouragement, because of the frustration. And in their minds, they said, this is too tough. We're going to go somewhere where it's easier. We're going to do something simpler. Fight the battles in front of you, and God will make sure the battles ahead of you are dealt with. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. Write this down. When I give up on the promises of God, Giants are born that future generations will have to deal with. Watch the map. What territory was Dan in? Philistine territory. They said it's too tough. Listen. David would never have had to fight Goliath if Dan would have conquered their territory. (laughs) 
If I don't deal with my giants, my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids will have to fight a battle they shouldn't have to fight. This is the reason it's important to grab a hold of the promises that God has given you right now. Because it's not just about you and me. It is about future generations. It is about nations. It's not just about what I'm enduring right now. What I've got to deal with right now. Because you want your grandkids. You want your great, 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 great grandkids after you're long gone to look back and say my great great granddaddy was a man of God my great great grandma was a woman of God they held on to God they believed God it was tough for them they struggled but they did not give up they held on to the promise of God and because they held on to the promise of God I don't have to deal with the giants they did dealt with. <laughs> Write this down. For 2024, isolation leads to captivity. Let me show you the map again. What part of Israel would go into captivity before any other part of Israel would. The northern kingdom. Dan should not even have been there. And when the Assyrians begin to attack Israel in 721 BC, they will wipe out the entire northern kingdom. And Dan will disappear from history. As a matter of fact, when you read in the book of Revelation about the 12 tribes, each of the 12 tribes of Israel, Dan is not mentioned. because they isolated themselves away from the rest of Israel because it was easier at the time. It was just easier. They removed themselves from the relationships with the other tribes. Listen to me. When you disconnect yourself from other tribes in the body of Christ, you will move into a place of isolation that opens you up for captivity. Yes. I do it myself. I don't need help. I just be a Christian on my own. Can't do it. So how, how, how do I get there? Because I see sitting in front of me right now promises that have yet to be fulfilled. I have hopes and dreams of things that I believe that God has placed within me. And yet, they seem elusive. You reach for them and you can't quite grasp them. How, how, how do I get there how do you get there? How do we as a church get there? How do we as a nation get there? Because I want to tell you, there are promises of God that still are lying 
across the face of this nation that God intends to fulfill. Stop looking at the news and start reading your Bible. Stop listening to commentators and get in the Word and see what He says about the nations and God's intent for the nations. God has a holy intent for the nations of the world. How am I going to get there? So as we begin 2024, here's a simple psalm that we're going to meditate on and we're going to, we're going to pray about. So I want you to stand with me. Here's, here's what the psalmist said. I'm climbing up the mountain of God. And it's tough. And I'm tripping. The rocks don't seem steady under my feet. It feels difficult. I'm challenged. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? As we begin 2024, only those whose hands and hearts are pure. This is the deep dive into asking the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. I want to climb the mountain of God. I want to ascend the hill of the Lord. Who may do that? Those whose Hearts and hands are pure and who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such is the generation. There is a generation. There is a generation that is ready to hear from God. But it's that generation whose hands and hearts are pure who do not lift, what does it mean to lift my soul up to an idol? Anything that takes the place of my time with Christ. Anything that draws my attention away. Anything that is a, is a hook that grabs a hold of me and distracts me from my attention with Christ. Anything that keeps me from His Word. Anything that keeps me from prayer. Anything that keeps me from a focus on Christ. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. So, at the beginning of this year, I want you to slip both hands toward the Lord right now. Would you begin to call out to the Lord for Him to search your heart right now. There are four consecrations we're going to do this morning. First consecration is a personal consecration. Would you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I come to you. And I can't do your praying for you. I can only do my praying for me. Would you ask the Holy Spirit, search me, God. Lord, do something within me that has never been done before. Holy Spirit, let my mind, God, be clean. Let my hands be clean. Let my motives be clean. Let my attitude be clean. Let my tongue be clean. Let my words be clean. Holy Spirit, search us, O oh God. Search us, O oh God. Search us, O oh God. Doesn't matter what happened last year. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday. At the first of this year, together, would you verbally tell the Lord right now, God, 
I consecrate myself to you in a fresh way at the beginning of this year together. Would you tell God that right now? Now, would you begin to consecrate your family? Would you call out the names of your family right now to the Lord? Spouses, kids, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. Would you call their names out to the Lord right now? And would you consecrate your family to the Lord in a fresh way in this room right now? Now, would you consecrate this church in a fresh way to the Lord and your commitment to this body, to the other tribes that are in this body? Would you consecrate this place and our relationships with one another together right now? Call out to the Lord for this place right now. Come on. Now, would you consecrate this city to the Lord? Would you ask God to, to come into this city, to do something that has never been done before? Can we set this city apart? Oh, yes, we can with our prayers. Can we set this city apart to the Lord in Jesus' name? We call on you, Jesus, for this city, for this county, Now, would you consecrate everything that you have and what God has given to you? At the first of this year, if God doesn't have our money, He does not have us. Yes. Maybe you've been challenged in the management of money in the past and in your giving in the past. This is the time to consecrate your bank accounts to the Lord and say, God, they belong to you. I dedicate everything that I have to you right now. Would you consecrate the resources that God has given to you right now? Would you consecrate them to God? I want you to take the card that you got, the, the, the note card that you got with the dove on it. Go ahead and take the card right now. You 
can stay standing if you want to. We're going to pray over this. I want you to write down two requests on this card. Number one, I want you to write, because we're going to pray over these every day. The staff is in here every morning from 6 to 10 o'clock just seeking the Lord. We've suspended our activities this month to seek the Lord because here's what we believe. If you want to see what we've never, you've never seen, you've got to do what you've never done. Look at me. Some of us want something from God, but you're not willing to do what you've never done before. You say, I'm not really, I'm not really much into this prayer and fasting. Why don't you do something that you've never done before so you can see what you've never seen before? Two prayer requests. Number one, somebody that needs the Lord, write it down. Second prayer request, a personal prayer request that you're asking God about. Write it down. What are we expecting God, looking for God to do in 2024? Here's the rest of the Psalm, and this is what it says. Open up ancient gates. What's he talking about here? He's talking about the ancient gates of revival. He's talking about the ancient gates of healing. He's talking about the ancient gates of salvation. He's talking about gates that the enemy has tried to destroy. But he's praying and saying, open up gates let them open up and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord invincible in battle open up ancient gates open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord of heaven's armies he is the king of glory what do we want we want jesus to walk right into the middle of our lives into the middle of our families our marriages our kids our churches our cities our nations we want the ancient doors of god that the enemy has shut and closed we're saying god open up the ancient doors and how does that happen how does that take place who shall ascend the hill of the lord he that hath clean hands and a pure heart they will see the ancient doors of god open up and every promise that is resting within you right now is a promise that the behind that ancient door is every promise that sits in your heart right now here's what i want you to do ushers are coming right now 80 percent of this church gives online approximately which is good I would encourage you to do online giving, but right now they're coming for you to decide the first of this year, I'm gonna be a giver. Take the card, take the prayer request, put them in the bucket, put them in the bucket. And every morning and every Sunday this month, we're gonna pray over the cards because we believe that God is going to do something that has never been done before. Now I want some of you who are older in the room to look at me for a minute. If you have any religion in you, if you don't, don't pay any attention to me right now. If you have any religion in you that says, I've heard all of this before, chuck it out the door. It's a new year and it's time for you to go after God in a way that you have never gone after Him before.
Come on and stand with me right now. Lift your hands to the Lord. And is there anybody in the room that out loud could worship Jesus for 60 seconds here and believe God for this coming year? Come on, out loud in Jesus' name right now. Come on. 